All right, that was fun. I'm gonna go back to home and we're gonna go on to the next phase of the OSF. You're planning your research, registrations versus pre-registrations, right? Um, this typically happens in this phase of developing an idea, study idea, um, study design and acquiring materials. So first off, what is a registration? Now, the typical you know, trajectory of research is you design a project, you conduct that project, you report on that project, and you publish that project. Uh, the peer review phase happens between the report and publish when you submit to a publisher, somebody reviews it and decides whether it's worthy of publishing. The problem with that, and one of the replication problems, is that it tends to lead to only successful studies really working out um, and being published. Uh, it doesn't really add credit to all of the work that happens beforehand. Uh, it also kind of incentivizes people to, you know, if they get a result that doesn't match what their plan was, they could have just, they could just change their plan. And then suddenly the results match what they planned to do um, in big air quotes. Uh, the metaphor we like to use is it's like if you fired a bow and arrow and wherever that arrow landed, you just drew a target around it and said, yeah, that's totally what I meant to do. That's not really transparency, and that's not really how research is supposed to go. Uh, and by doing that, you kind of lose faith in the research process. So registrations are a way of combating that. So talking about pre-registration, a pre-registration or registration is a time-stamped version, a read-only version of your research plan. It's created at a very specific moment in time, and the point is, is that you are basically calling your shot. You are locking in your plan at a certain phase and saying at this time, at this date, this was my research plan. Here's what my hypothesis is. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to analyze and how it's going to happen. And then at the end, when you are finally publishing, you can share that pre-registration and say, look, back at this date, at this time, this is what my plan was. And see, I actually got the results that I want. Now, the question that we usually get here is what are the difference between registrations and pre-registrations? Um, and that is a little bit ambiguous because sometimes in the world they are used synonymously, but at least on the OSF, this is how we kind of define it. Uh, it's really based on the timing of when you're submitting this registration versus pre-registration. So again, up here at the top, you have design, conduct, report, and publish. That's in general timeline for a research project. Now, for a pre-registration, what you are doing is while you are designing and preparing to conduct that experiment, you're filling out the form. Now, prior to actually conducting that experiment, you submit this form. You submit this pre-registration form that locks it in place. You have a timestamp that says, this is what my plan was at this moment in time prior to conducting this experiment. Now, obviously things change and you can update that form but every version, it'll create a new version of that pre-registration, and every version will tell that story. It's kind of like, you know, one of those old-timey flip books where you have, you know, one version and then one page and one image and one image and one minute, one minute, and every time you're flipping it, you're getting that full story of what's happening. And that can happen all the way up until you publish. Um, the point is that when you publish, you can call your shot and say, hey, I did this, and my idea happened right before we conducted experiments. So no funny business happened. Whereas registrations, they're a little bit more ambiguous on the timeline. Uh, again, you are trying to fill out that form as prior to conducting your experiment. Um, but you can actually submit that form really after you've conducted your experiment while you're reporting all the way up until the moment that you actually publish. Um, as you can tell, uh, we, we're not that's not super transparent and we don't love that idea. We do push people to try and pre-register work as that is probably the more transparent of methods. But the problem is, is that things happen. COVID-19, for example, or um, you know, things change in your research lab. Uh, you have to make changes. Uh, some, you know, some forms, some disciplines that pre-registration just isn't super practical. Um, especially for some of the more applied disciplines. So registering your work is still very important, um, but we do tend to push people towards pre-registrations. The second part of this uh, that I usually get as a question is the idea of scooping. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, scooping is a term where uh, you have an idea, you share it with somebody you probably shouldn't have, uh, and that person has more resources, more time, more money, uh, and they conduct your experiment before you do, and they get to publishing before you do. Um, 
Obviously, that doesn't work very well in this idea of pre-registration. If I submit this publicly, someone could just take my work and make it published before me. So obviously, we live in the real world. We would love if you shared your work publicly beforehand. You know, you get a timestamp with that. But uh, we do also offer the idea of embargoing. So embargoing is temporarily making a registration private up to four years after you've submitted it. Um, this gives you time in order to, you know, conduct your actual experiment. You've submitted a timestamp, um, but you can conduct your experiment, uh, finish your analyses, get ready to publish, have it submitted for publication, have it published, and then release your registration to the public and say, hey, I called my shot when? And that looks like this. Now, you also may be wondering, what does that look like on the OSF? Um, I'll show you right here. Uh, so here is a example of a registered registration on the OSF that is embargoed. Can anyone see anything? So if someone just randomly finds your link, clicks in, you know, random digits, they find your registration, they will see a page that says page not found. This same exact registration on the same exact link in a view only version, which you could share with. Uh, colleagues or people that you trust or uh, grant evaluators, um, you can share a view only link, which edits that URL to give you a private version of that space. Uh, that's the difference between seeing a embargoed registration versus an embargo registration with a view only link. Okay, now let's go back to here. Let's see what some of these registrations actually look like. So explain what a registration looks like can be as simple as this. Uh, so this is an updated version of a registration. Starting here on the side, you will see a little bit of the tabs. Again, you can add metadata to your registration, files, resources, anything like that. Uh, those open resources badges, those links are found here on the side. So if I go to resources, I can see the data that is connected with this um, OSF registration. As you go down the column, you'll see the content that is available for this registration. Uh, you also see the timestamp and the type of registration that this is. This is an OSF pre-registration, and it was created on September 20, 23rd, 2020. Uh, you'll see all the contributors that are associated with this registration. Uh, it's important to note that contributors on the registration uh, need to be admin in order to accept that registration. Uh, all registrations that are public are associated, have a DOI. Um, that is a digital object identifier, which is a persistent link uh, that will never break and never change. So if you're going to share your work with a publication or a registration, you're going to want to share your DOI. Uh, you can also add a license or citation uh, to make sure that you are telling people how you want your work to be shared. Uh, again, I said that registrations can be updated. Uh, the original version is found here. Uh, and you can see that what the original plan was. And, and any additional versions of that registration, you'll see the latest version uh, where they'll give the reason for the update and what sections were actually updated in comparison. Again, looking at that flip book. Now, going to our next version, um, let's take a second and let's look at how can I actually create a registration. Now, the first sec one thing I want to do is go up to this top section and look at add new. I'm going to click and it's going to create, take me to um, the OSF registrations draft page. From here, I'll have two options. Uh, do I create a registration from an existing OSF project? So if you've been working really hard on an OSF project and you wanna use that to like create a snapshot of that, reg uh, that OSF project, you can absolutely do that. Um, all I would do is click yes, and then I would select what project I want to work from. And that'll pre-fill in a lot of the information from your registration into whatever template you would like to use. The other aspect is if I want to start brand new. So if I want to just start a registration from scratch, I don't have a project I'm working from, I can click no, and I can select what template I would like to use. Now, these templates are all based around trying to give you different criteria and framework in order to frame how you want to plan your study, plan your registration. Um, there are different options, and I can't really tell you which one works best for you. Uh, the team has a chat. Uh, they'll send in the chat a, uh, a link that'll help you essentially decide which one works better for you. Uh, it's our choose your own licensing or choose your own uh, 
registration template, uh, and you can look through that. So for now, I'm going to click on OSEP pre-registrations because that's the one I was talking about the most. I'm going to click create a draft. And all that does is it really gives me the option of going through and adding in all of the information. So this is the registration metadata, again, the high level that you want to fill out, uh, title, description, um, contributors. Now, it's important to note here uh, different permission levels. If you want somebody to be able to approve and you need them to approve this registration before it becomes public, uh, you want to have them be an administrator. Uh, it's also important to note that any associated projects with a registration can have different permission levels. They can have different permission levels. So if you have the same contributors, but it on your project, one of them is an admin versus on a registration, or one of them is, say, a read and write only, uh, that just makes it so that they can't actually approve this registration. It will go on and be approved even without them. Affiliated institutions, we've talked about that, adding a license. Uh, and this basically just takes you through all of the elements that you need to look at. So study type, uh, uh, whether it's blinded or not, sampling, vari variables, analysis plan, um, everything all the way down to other. Uh, it'll give you a chance to review before I get started. Uh, and as I said, um, after you filled out all this information, I can't submit it now because it won't even let me click on this because I don't have some of the information filled out. Uh, it'll give me the two options. First, when I click register, it'll give me the option to embargo. You can pick a date again up to four years from now. Um, but then it'll also send out an email to all of your admin on your project um, asking them to approve. They'll have 48 hours and then it will be auto approved if not. Mm -hmm.